So what we're gonna do today is we're going to change the gears on the Series 1000 pump without messing with the calibration of the pump. Uh, and for this, you need a flat head screw and the 3 8 red, uh, uh, Allen key. And you need a sharp tool in order for you to take off the O-ring from the gear shaft. And of course the gear that you need to replace. So the first step is you need to make sure that the plunger is fully in the discharge stroke. And you can always know that by rotating the worm shaft and you're gonna see the plunger is going into the suction stroke and then it goes into the discharge. So when it goes into the last end of the discharge stroke, here we go. Right now it's fully in the discharge stroke. Take off the worm shaft. And then take off the, uh, uh, the, this is what we call the fork, which is the, the pipe pass actuator. And this is the pipe pass, pipe pass rod. So use the 3 8 uh, Allen key with the handle because if you use it just only with, with a short handle, it's gonna be tough for you to take it. So make sure that you get the Allen key, the 3 8 with the handle. And just get it a counterclockwise to loosen these two bolts. Here's the first one. second one and it's very important to not mess with the calibration of the pump because if you do that then you're gonna lose some flow rate so what I would do I would just twist it to the left side like this and then take it off so what do you do if, if you want to put it back same way you're just gonna put it like in the opposite direction because there's a slot in the bypass actuator bypass uh, tube where this goes into the slot. This is how you take it out. I would leave the bypass rod in the, in, in the control spool. So this is the first step. The second step is to take off the gear shaft from the housing. And the way to do it is we, of course, we take off these screws with a flathead screwdriver. And then we tap it from the opposite side to take off the O-ring because you don't want to uh, 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 push the, 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 the gear uh, shaft all the way because it has some O-rings and you're going to bench it. So what you're going to do is you take off one of the O-ring and then you tap it from the opposite directions. So we're taking out the first screw for the gear shaft. the second screw and then I'm gonna tap it until I see the o-rings come out and then I'm gonna do the sharp tool to take it if you can't take it just I'll push it a little bit more with your finger And here's the first O-ring zap. So after you take out the first O-ring, I would tap on the gear shaft all the way until it comes out from the opposite direction. Well, you don't have to fully take it out, but you can always push it until it holds the spacer between the gear and the housing. There's a spacer. Make sure that you're not gonna lose it. See the spacer right there? This is the spacer. So I would take the, the shaft until the edge of the shaft is with the edge with the spacer. Because you don't want the spacer to go into the inside of the pump and you're gonna lose it. So to take off the gear right now from the housing, I would just How would you hand to get it? And sometimes it gets slippery because of the ring, because of the oil. Yeah. 
and the way to take it out is after you have it all the way straight like this I'll put my finger into the, 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 the connecting rod and try to just gently twist it because the last thing you want is the gear to be jammed into the connecting rod so here's the gear set here's the warm gear so after you take out the warm gear you want to replace it with uh, another one so I will just lubricate it a little bit you can use the oil, you can use the residual oil from the pump just lubricate it a little bit and then the same exact way so basically you grab it with your left hand and with the right hand is you just hold the connecting rod if you see it's gonna get stuck I would take it off immediately and try to sand it the edge of the uh, warm gear so right now the warm gear is inside the connecting rod you can tell that it's easy it goes in and out which is good and right now what I do I will just slowly take it down and using your finger from the pull of the shaft I would hold it with your finger if you want to zoom in right here you can see that the hole of the, uh, the warm gear is pretty much aligned with the hole of the housing and then what I would do I would just grab it with my finger and try to slide the shaft back again that's why I'm saying that you need to keep the shaft you're always connected with the housing and the spacer because it makes it easier for you to just slide the shaft and otherwise you need to have the spacer first and uh, it will save you time so you just gently tap it until you see the edge of the shaft so what I would do I would just tap it with the back of the uh, flathead screw and push it with your finger until you see again the groove for the o-ring and then you put the o-ring that you took out back again and you can use your hand to just make sure that this edge is flushed with the housing and then you put the first screw right here and make sure that this notch of the uh, of the gear shaft is matching the screw because you don't want the screw to actually uh, be hitting the edge of it and it's gonna mess it up and then you go from the other side You screw the second screw until it's tight. Yeah. And then I will tie it back again from the other side. Make sure that it's really tight. And then I will double check the motion of the gear again. Which is perfect. And right now, you need to put the bypass actuator again again you're gonna see the tube which is the one that we left in the first of the process you just gently take it out your finger and then remember this slot right here is meant to go with the slot of the bypass tube so you're just gonna put it like this way and then twist it until these uh, uh, slots matching the, 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 the screws 
place on the on the plunger. And then I put the first screw, and don't tighten it. Just put it with a couple threads engaged, and then you put the second screw. And then I will tighten the second screw until it's. I feel like it's a little bit tight. And then I go tighten the second screw, which is, I mean, the first screw, until it's really tight. And give it just one twist, twist. And just just one more time to make sure that it's actually rotating easily. And then you put the worm shaft. Sometimes give it just a couple of turns in order for it to allocate itself. And that's it.